Hi there, I'm Mike Thornton. This video tutorial forms part of the process of setting up the free Room EQ wizard ready to take measurements of each of the speakers in my 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos system in my studio. Then to turn those measurements into a set of EQ filters and then finally transfer that data into the Dabman software to set up the SPQ card in my interface. Click on the measure button in the toolbar at the top and the make a measurement window will open up. If you're wondering why this window doesn't look anything like what you have, the design of this window has changed quite significantly from 5.19 to version 5.20. If you haven't got version 5.20 or later, then I do recommend that you stop, go to the companion article on Production Expert and find how to get the latest version of Room EQ Wizard, install and set it up and then come back to this video. Before we go any further, I do want to talk about where the measurement mic should go. For each speaker, you need to take a series of measurements with the microphone in a slightly different place. Once we've completed those measurements for each speaker, we can take an average of them and that's the curve that we'll use to set up the EQ filters. Place your chair where you would normally sit and then set the measurement microphone to where your left ear would normally be if you were sat in the chair. And this is what we'll call position one. Now because of the room nodes and because there's also going to be path differences due to reflections, it is important to take a series of measurements around the listening position. I chose to take seven measurements for each speaker at slightly different positions around my listening position. Some slightly higher, others slightly lower, some closer and some further away. You can do more measurements if you prefer, but I do recommend that you determine the exact positions for the measurement mic before you start measuring properly so that your positioning is consistent throughout the measurement process for all the speakers in your system. The first thing we need to do is to name the set of tests. In this case, front center, as that's the speaker I'm going to be measuring. Click on the add number option, and then by clicking here, you can set it so that the initial number is one. So that would go with the test at position one. Then slightly further down, set the range of the sweep test to start at 10 hertz and to finish at 20,000 hertz. For everything else, the default setting should be pretty well okay. Then to double check all is well, click on the check levels button and you should get a blast of pink noise for three seconds. The key thing here is to check that REW reports that the level is okay. The actual numbers are less important here. Click on the start button and REW will generate a sweep tone sequence. Once the sweep has finished, you'll get the main window with the results of that first sweep. Don't worry if it looks something like this, all will become much clearer later on. Click the measure button again to reopen the measurement page, move the microphone to the next position and click start again. Notice that the measurement name increments up a number so that you can identify which measurement is which, so it's worth being consistent and following the same sequence of microphone positions. The great thing is that you can use these measurement mics to look at all kinds of things, so there shouldn't be a need to repeat the measurement process again. You'll notice that I haven't analyzed the sub. This is because all my speakers are full range. I only use my sub as an LFE channel and therefore feel there's kind of little point in EQing it. I will, of course, calibrate it later as part of my final monitor calibration setup. You'll need to repeat this process for each of your measuring positions until you've built up a full set of measurements. Once you've got that full set for one speaker, click on the Average the Responses button and you'll see that we get one more trace, which is an average of all the readings that you've taken for that speaker 
in my case, front center. Next, uncheck all the individual measurements until you're left with the one that's just the average trace. Now, from the File menu, select Save All Measurements and label the file with the appropriate speaker's name. You may well be able to remove that set of measurements and start again, but to be safe, I chose to close Room EQ Wizard and then reopen it as a blank page and then repeat the process. Either way, you'll end up with a full set of REW measurement files, one for each speaker. And once you've got this full set of measurement files, you can then move to the next stage, which is to take that average curve and use Room EQ Wizard to calculate the necessary EQ filters to correct for that curve, and then finally transfer them to your SPQ card using the Dabman software. See you again soon.